And of course, what the author is doing all the time he's doing that is largely unconsciously revealing himself. Yes, yes. And this, of course, the unconscious self-revelation is at its most obvious in, uh, in bad art. And I think, I mean, to, to uh, stick to this question about literature and the world, I think that the, the writer is engaged over a very, very large area of his personality in his writing, and that the writing and the work of art is judged against the background of the real world, and, and by the real world, I mean the common sense real world, not some kind of recherche real world, which would need a special implements to discover, but uh, the, the world which we take to be real in ordinary life and in, in common sense. Does this mean that imaginative writing must, although it's imaginative, be rooted in some kind of respect for things as they are and acceptance of things as they are? Yes, I, I think so, yes. I think that this, I mean, one can play with this idea in relation to painting and as I said very often painting shows you something about literature that um, someone might say well obviously painting isn't always mimetic what about abstract painting well yes certainly um, but I think it's very difficult to judge abstract painting actually and I think a, a lot of funny stuff is appearing now which perhaps might be very difficult to justify but in any clear critical vocabulary but I mean one would be one works at a critical vocabulary while one works at a, at, at an art uh, the critic and the artist have a, a kind of, of natural organic relationship but the abstract painting lives in a, a world which isn't uh, which isn't abstract painting and it's connected with that world in in deep ways and uh, Obviously, one can distinguish between a good abstract painting and a bad abstract painting, and this is something to do with, with the with the real world. But hard to hard to explain, perhaps, but it's there, and it's it's very much more obvious and simple, of course, in the case of a novel, where ideas of plausibility and implausibility and fantasy and so on. Do you think that this acceptance of reality implies something conservative with a small c? I'm not talking any in terms that relate at all to party politics, but to temperament. Do you think this acceptance of reality as it is implies some kind of conservatism of outlook on the part of an artist? It's an interesting point, yes. I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, to, to, sorry, to, to, to try to illustrate perhaps more clearly just to myself this thing about common sense being involved... Uh, there are philosophical ideas which sometimes get picked up by writers. Uh, for instance, the whole uh, collection of ideas connected with the, um, uh, the self not being a kind of unitary object, the self being fragmentary and so on. And this, uh, this is an idea which a lot of writers, of course, play with. But the, the force of their play takes place in a world where we normally take the self to be continuous um, and we would hold a very odd belief about various subjects such as moral responsibility if we thought that the self was was discontinuous uh, and this well this is just to say again what I said about the abstract painting lives in the world of uh, where we are interested in real objects and and colors as parts of objects and so on um, I don't know. I mean, it would, this would be an interesting sort of theory, wouldn't it, to say that, that um, uh, artists are always conservatives mm. uh, because they have a, a tolerant... I think there's a kind of tolerance involved. I don't know about um, conservative exactly, but I think that, that a great artist has got a kind of tolerance because he can see an awful lot of, of what's really there. I mean, Shakespeare can, can see... An enormous amount. There's, I think there's a kind of breath of, of tolerance which comes out of Shakespeare because he can see so much. He can see how awfully different different people are and what, what makes them different and how many different ways there are of thinking about the world. And, and this, I think, this is a, this, this is, is a, a kind of virtue. And I think it's this virtue of tolerance which a lot of uh, um, dictatorial art, as it were, is, is deliberately excluding. Well, I think wherever we finish this discussion, Iris Murdoch, it would have a very sort of unfinished feel, but that's in the nature of the, of the subject, and I think we are going to have to stop now. Thank you very much indeed.